and Hamilton and will help the players and help you guys find it. Probably the auxiliary room near the locker rooms. Um, players, make sure to be close to the microphone so that Mac.TV people can hear you. And I guess to start, the opening statement for Coach Dunn. Uh, yeah, you know, first off, just congratulate Ryder on such a great season for them. And Kevin's a, a good friend of mine, and, and those guys are such a tough opponent. I really, I really respect um, their program uh, tremendously. And, um, you know, their team epitomized what he is and, and, and toughness. And uh, we're just really fortunate um, to get by those guys. You know, we knew it was going to be a war. Um, we knew that we were going to have to fight harder than we, we, than we fought all year uh, in the paint. Um, and I'm just so proud of my guys that, uh, that we got it up to 15. And you know, we've had some meltdowns this year um, at end of games. And, but we kept saying on the bench, man, it do doesn't have to be pretty. You just got to you know, be ahead when, when the zeros hit. And uh, Sam Adobo hit some big, uh, hit some big free throws there. And, and honestly, the one I, I can't remember was it nine when Sam we uh, had the side out of bounds and uh, we got the ball inside. And sometimes when the pressure is crazy, you just got to throw the ball inside and calm everything down. And Sam gets the jump hook. And I'm so happy for him. And so happy for Nick. And um, made some big shots and some big moments. And uh, our defense was really good tonight. And um, I'm just happy, man. So that's it. Hey, John. Kyle Franco with the Trentonian. During the, the two regular season games against Ryder were decided by seven, seven points combined. Did you feel like there wasn't that big of a difference just between the two teams despite the seeds? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, at our place we were up, uh, you know, well over double digits early in the first half. Um, they roared back like they normally do. Um, they got a big lead in the second, but we fought back. We cut it to three. Um, they held on for the win. At their place, we're up like 15, 16 in the second half um, in, in a sold, packed uh, theme night in, 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 a big cr in front of a big crowd. So I knew we could live in the moment, you know, um, after that. Um, but, you know, true to form, man, they play hard, they press, they turn you over, and they crush you on the glass. And that's what they did to us. But even that being said, um, it stayed at a six-point game throughout almost the whole the whole second half and uh, for us winning and, and we just turned it over a couple times down the stretch um, that you know obviously we've got to learn from so yeah we had nothing but confidence uh, going into today we we felt confident that we could defend them um, I wasn't a hundred percent sure we can keep them off the glass I'll be truthful right now but you know but we we, uh, we fought on the glass and uh, we just felt that if we didn't turn it over and we competed on a glass, we were going to have a chance to win. And uh, fortunately, it came out victorious. Uh, Nick, uh, Mark Singleace from the Albany Times Union. Along the same lines, after, play, after losing two close games in the turn of the regular season, how confident were you that you could beat them in this third meeting? I mean, like Coach touched upon, uh, we just knew that as long as we don't turn the ball over uh, like at a high rate and just stick together and play as a team we were very confident you know especially getting the win yesterday momentum going into this game so we're just trying to take that momentum and continue to play uh, great basketball on our end. Sam what made you guys confident you could defend them because not a lot of teams in in the league this year have slowed them down. Um, like coach mentioned before in our previous two games we showed that we could defend them well um, we messed up on our part letting them come back and they roared back like coach said so we came in pretty confident and we've been on a kind of like a win streak so we felt that we just use that momentum to stay confident and just defend as we always defend. John Dillon if you're in Q30 Sports a rare part of this game was that neither team had a timeout for the final 340. Does your coaching style change or what goes through a coach's mind when you can't pull one out of the back pocket for the last like four I minutes? Mean, coaches are control freaks so you at the end of the day you, you, you want your timeouts but um but yesterday, we didn't have timeouts in the last three or so minutes, and that was a blessing for us because I couldn't call timeout and set a great play up. And these guys just, players make plays in big moments, right? Um, lesson learned. So, uh, you know, today, lesson, we, we blew, you know, side out of bounds early in the second half. We have to call a timeout when we shouldn't have. We, we just lost poise there for a few minutes and burned our timeouts. But uh, fortunately, we had a big enough lead. 
that these turnovers down the stretch didn't didn't affect us. So uh, um, no, nah, it is what it is, man. You know, you, you, you coach these guys up through the year, and you hope at this point in time they know what they're doing and they have the confidence to go out there and execute. We talk about it all the time. We're going to work really, really hard to put you in position to have success. At the end of the day, man, players got to play, and players got to have confidence.